video for 8.3, confidence intervals for sample means. What I'd like you to do right now is just pause and open the outline. Uh, it's posted in Schoology in the vocab, so you get a sense of what's going on here. I'm going to try uh, just doing an example problem and then referencing the outline as needed to kind of explain why we're doing what we're doing. So here's our example problem. We've got a random sample of 30 college students from 2013, uh, and they each spend an average of about Eight, a little under eight and a half hours each week on social media. There's a number right there. They found that the standard deviation of the sample was 2.4457, about a little over that. And we want to find the 95% confidence interval for the true average time spent by college students between the ages of 16 and 22. Um, if you're interested, this study was looking at the correlation between that and uh, if there's any connection between that and their GPA. Um, so. With all of our problems, we're going to go through and do the state plan, do, conclude. So we want to always hit those four on the head. State plan, do, conclude. And this is like the little template you want to fill out every time you're going through those. So state, we're going to state the problem. Here we want to estimate mu, the true average amount of hours spent on social media by college students from ages 16 to 22 each week with 95% confidence. Plan, what are we going to do for plan? Well. Here, we don't know the true population standard deviation. So let's take a look at, at our outline and see what happens here. Well, what happens is that oftentimes we know uh, the population standard deviation in some of the problems we've done. In the real, real world, we don't know what the population standard deviation is. And our equation is based on that. We have our sample mean plus or minus a z-score times the population standard v deviation over the square root of n. Well, we know with our, our sample size, we're not going to necessarily get the truest indication of the, the population standard deviation. So a z-score, uh, we end up with a lot of values that end up having z-scores that uh, don't seem to fit the data, at least in terms of standard deviation, because we're not getting a good interpretation. So basically, what we need to know is that if we know the population standard deviation, we can use a z-score. Most of the times, we don't, and we need to use what we call a t-critical value, the t-score which is the same thing except that it's based on the, the standard deviation of the sample. So you can see the formula for z here. The only difference with t is that it's based on the standard deviation of the sample, not of the population as up here. So we say it has a certain number of degrees of freedom. What that lets us know is the approximate value for, t, for our t-critical value that we should use. As the sample size gets bigger, our standard deviation gets uh, smaller of our sample. So to account for that, um, the degrees of freedom in the t statistic we use is based on the sample size uh, to get a better estimate of what the true parameter is, a better, more accurate confidence interval, really, since we're basing it on the standard deviation of our sample. So we're still going to have our point estimate plus or minus our t critical value times the standard error of the statistic. So it's it's more or less the same. So we have to we have to make sure that we have the random, normal, and independent conditions met, just as before. And we're going to talk about when this holds up in terms of sample size. So keep in mind, conditions are just like we went over in the previous chapter about having to have a random so you know that the mean of the sampling distribution is the true mean, um, a big enough sample size so we know it's normal, greater than or equal to 30, or that the population is normal, and then that we're not sampling more than 10% of the population so that uh, the independent condition holds up and we can use our formulas for standard deviation. So basically what we have is more or less the same, but our critical value for t, uh, we're going to take the sample size and subtract 1 and then consult the table in the back of the book for the correct value depending on the um, confidence in level that we want. And now I encourage you to use the, the table in the back of your book because it actually lists the confidence level down at the bottom too, so it makes it a little easier in that sense. Uh, one less step for you. So here for plan, uh, we're going to say we're going to use a one-sample t-interval for mu if the following conditions are satisfied. Now notice that we did a one-sample z-interval for p before, so make sure you get this part correct. Let's check our conditions. Is it random? Well, it says it's a random sample. So that lets us know that the mean of our sampling distribution equals the true mean. Normal. Well, we're not told about the population if it's normal, but we all are told that there's a random sample of 30 here. So the central limit theorem lets us know that that's big enough to know that the, dis the distribution is approximately normal. We have the independent condition, um, where we can't sample more than 10% of the population. Well, we sampled 30. 10 times 30 is 300. 
there are well more than 300 college students um, in the US, so we're safe to use our formula for standard deviation. So we're going to apply this statistic plus or minus the critical value times the standard deviation in order to solve this. So let's see what those look like. So we have our sample mean plus or minus the critical value for t uh, based on our confidence level of 95% and our degrees of freedom. Remember we use n minus 1 for that times the standard error. So this was given in the problem. Sample size is 30. Uh, for the multiple choice question, what I would like you to do is solve this. Your multiple choice is what is the confidence interval? So we are 95% confident that the interval from what to what captures the true amount of hours spent on social media for age, from ages 16 to, two each, 16 to 22 each week. So you'll be answering what the confidence interval is. Make sure you find the correct value of t and then solve this through correctly. Here are your answer choices. So we are 95% confident that the interval from lower bound to upper bound captures the true amount of hours spent on social media by college students from 16, ages 16 to 22 each week. So these answers are in the form of lower bound, upper bound. Uh, so answer A, B, C, D, or E after you've had a chance to go through and finish that calculation on your own. Uh, and then take a look at the guiding question and answer that.